Thank you for joining me today in this video. I want to open us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with grateful hearts for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth and let our hearts be filled with joy and thanksgiving. We give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. That ending is from Psalm 107.1. I am inspired to use Esther's uh, purple piece of God prayer kit with these gorgeous ladies on it. Um, and I have decided that I want to make a uh, crinkly, soft cover out of fabric. And this is the, the uh, template that I'm going to be using. I made this back in January for Junk Journal January. And what I used was a prime envelope. And just to quickly show you, see how you hear it crinkle? It's so nice. It's soft. So you use two different, use two pieces of fabric, and then I sewed it all around the edge, and then that middle's in there. And I love that part. And then I added this flap. I don't think I'm going to do that for this one because, as you can see, when I made it, I didn't realize how fat mine was going to be. So I'm not sure how fat this one will be, but I don't think I'm going to add that flap. I'll use something different. And I had uh, eight... Let's see, eight pages, which turns into 16. And then, like I said, it got really, really fat in here. But I love that I made this pocket. So here, that's my that's my thinking process of, you know, kind of copying that. So the size of that is 12 inches across, then folded in half at six, which is what I want. So it's 12, and then it's 10 tall. So before I just clicked on my camera, I went ahead and marked that and realized I need to show you how to make this. So you want to trim your envelope to the size that you want. And the person that I watched and got so inspired to make this was, oh, I should measure that. Uh, Barbara from 49 Dragonflies. So if you do not follow her channel, she's a phenomenal mixed media artist and she does junk journals. And she's awesome. And I've used quite a few of her digital kits too. Okay, so let's throw that away. And here is the base of what my book is my book is going to do. Yes, I think that's going to be really nice. I'm excited about that. I mean, I guess I could take these off. Doesn't really matter because it's going to be covered up anyway. You don't have to sew this on your sewing machine. I'm going to sew mine on the edges. I just, I like it and then it's really nice and sealed. So we'll get those off. And what fabric am I going to use? I splurged and bought the Tim Holtz. Uh, I got, I think I got six of his fabrics. And I just love this because look at how it goes with her purple. With the ladies, yes. So I am excited about that. Let's see, how much do I have? I don't think I have enough in this piece. I'm pretty sure I don't to make it on both sides. So I'm gonna have to go into my stash and pull out some other fabric to be the inner lining because I just think that's so beautiful. Let's turn this over and I'm going to lay this on here. Um, this fabric is pretty expensive and I don't want to I don't want to waste any of it. I'm going to actually put it about right there which that works and then of course do I have enough? No, I don't. So yes, I'm gonna have to go in my stash. So I'll be right back. Let me go in my stash and pull some things out and, and see what's going to work well. I've gathered a few things and this is gonna be really tricky. So here's the color scheme for uh, Esther's kit. And I would do this with anybody's kit, my kit, anybody else's kit. Um, I absolutely, of course, adore the purple. So that supports 
that this whole gorgeous kit. So that's definitely going to be the cover. It's the inside. And so I pulled some things out and I'll just walk you through my thinking. Um, white and black. I mean, it, it could go, but I'm not sure that it really brings out the kit. If I had some gold, I'd be really happy, but I don't. I've got this, which could mimic gold. So that's a possibility. I've got black, because there's black in this. I think those dots are too big. I've got this beige, which kind of pretends it's it's like this beigey gold color. But I'm not sure that I like all the background design with this. This I just pulled out, but no, that's not in the, that paper scheme. And then of course I've got this, which yes, I love. It's, it's the grungy Tim Holtz style. And to me, this color scheme pulls those golds out. So this and this, but then look at this. I just got this on an online auction from a friend. And of course it totally goes. You have to look at this. These are individually added little flowers. So I love it. The color, the design works. As an inside cover, I'm afraid that it will get so beat up and these will get ripped off. I think that I'm going to use this for this kit, but what I will do is use it in a different way. I will probably, uh, you know, add it to a background page of white. I think that would be, that would just be stunning with it, but just not as an inside cover. So I'm down to the two of these. Then I also have a big enough piece of, uh, yeah, I can't remember this, embroidery, embroidered type of fabric. And I think it goes, but this is grunge. This is super feminine. This is feminine, but she's got the grunge around it. So I kind of like that. So mm, I think I'm gonna set this one aside. So we're down to these two. We'll use this, but in a different way in there. Like I could use a piece of it behind one of the pictures of the women's faces. So let's see, which one should it be? This one would probably cause, call more attention, where this would definitely be a, just a backdrop to the pages. And what do I mean by that? Let me grab my, the demo one that I did. <clears throat> so what happens when you make this journal, yes, the outside's beautiful and I put dangles and I, and I love that, I love the dangles on it. The, this one I had two pieces of the exact same fabric. So what I'm saying to you is look at, you see very little of the inside cover once you put the pages in. So to me, it's a backdrop, it's a background, and you only really see it on the front page and then the last page. So I'm, I think I'm gonna go with the dots. I know, let's, let's try that. Cause I use the word, the word fabric a lot. Let's, let's just try the dots. I'm going to set aside those pieces. Let's set this aside now. Then what, I do, I do have my pins right here. I'm going to trim this fabric to the size. And of course it is not cut straight. They didn't cut it straight when it came to me. Let me get my fabric scissors. So I, I think I'm gonna trim this first and just make it straight because if I don't then I go and sew and and it's not oh well how's that gonna work Diane it would be a lot easier if I just did this well yep that will make it much easier let's just do that way and of course with my carpal tunnel hand <laughs> I have to figure out how to make it do it the easiest way for my hand so now I'm just going to trim that and get it as straight as I can before I cut the other sides. It's actually very difficult to cut such a small sliver. Let's see if I hold it like this. There we go, that's much better. 
my printer's cranking away in the background because I'm printing Esther's purple piece of God kit. I printed a few pages, I didn't print everything. So I'm print, finishing up the printing. So as I go to put this together, it will be, I will have all my papers ready. Got that done. Yes, that works. And we are going to be doing, I don't see much better. So what I'm going to do is leave that just a tiny, maybe a quarter of, oh, I'm sorry, you can't see it. I'm not on camera. I'm gonna leave this about a quarter of an inch so that when I put this on top, there's like a little, I'm actually gonna make, it comes out like a pocket is, is what it comes out like. So. Let's go ahead and add just a little bit on there, and I'm gonna trim on the salvage there. And we'll go right there. Let's, oh, let's go up a little bit more. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'm learning my lesson. I have to use, <laughs> I need to use a roller <laughs> because I think I'm cutting straight. Probably in the old days I was able to cut straight, but not with my wrist the way it is. It becomes very difficult. And so I end up moving my wrist. And then this comes up 10 to here. I need to stand up a little bit. Make that look as straight as I can. How straight is that, Diane? Hmm. I don't know that that looks totally straight. There we go. Okay. I'm satisfied with that. As satisfied as I can because we're junk journaling and nothing comes out perfect. You just do your best. Pray to God. And that's as much as we can do. This, oh, hold on a second. I have to add paper to my printer. I'm back. And a couple things happened while I was off camera. First of all, I decided, well, let me just tell you about this. I'll go backwards. Um, I decided to use that white fabric with the gold dots. And the minute I laid it on there, you could see the blue coming through. So I've used my uh, golden white gesso and I'm gessoing it. So that will have to dry before I can move forward, obviously. Uh, off camera, let me set this aside so it can dry. And then off camera, what I also decided to do is go ahead and get my iron out hold on and I don't want to get gesso on anything else and uh, iron the two pieces of fabric to get where that gesso dries really quick I just did it I ironed the two pieces of fabric so they have no fold marks now which is good and they are and I cut them out that's the last part you had seen and so I will be putting them together as soon as the gesso dries and I want to show you what I've got done so far. Wow, that gesso is crazy. <clears throat> Here's my two pieces of fabric. And like I said, the minute I laid this on, I should have thought about it because look, you can even see the gray lines through here. So if you're gonna use fabric and use darker tones, you're not gonna to have to prime the package underneath it. If you use anything light, you uh, have to paint it or put another piece of fabric underneath this. I could have done it that way, but I did not do that. I will wait till that's dry and I'll be back. Well, this is as dry as it's going to get. And it's okay because I'm gonna, going to be sticking fabric on top. I'm going to use fabric tack. This is the first time I've used this, but everybody who does this says it works great. So we will see. So again, I, I gessoed this so that the blue wouldn't show through. And I don't have to have this glue 
on every inch because I'm going to be sewing the edges. So I just, I want to just have it pretty much glued. This is an experiment. We'll see how this goes because I, I just realized that when I made the one I showed you, I did not use the uh, puffy one. I used the Amazon one that uh, was just paper. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're doing an experiment today. Let's see, I wanna get this so there's just the same amount all the way around. There we go. And I could glue this together. My camera is a little bit off. There we go. So I've sealed the Amazon bag together. Looks good. You can't see the blue prime thing through there. Yes. Excellent. And let's put the glue on this part. Oh, this hurts my hand. You don't realize how much you use your wrist until it's painful. As I said, I have carpal tunnel really bad in this one. And the simplest thing I go to do, I, you know, draw back in pain. I went to my chiropractor yesterday for my every other week adjustment, and he's been able to use that little popper thing on my wrist and on my elbow, and that seems to really be helping a lot. But the reality is a couple hours later, I go sit at the computer and then that's the end of the whole adjustment that he just made. <laughs> so let's see if we can get this on there. And of course, as I'm rubbing my hand, I can feel the glue coming forward and that's okay. It's coming through the fabric. So before I sew this, on my sewing machine, I will be letting it dry, that's for sure. It's a little bit of a pucker there. Yuck. Oh, look, it just comes right through as glue. But I've got it put together, yes. As straight as it's probably going to be. That's that part. I will be back once it's dried and I have uh, taken the edges and gone around my uh, sewing machine. And we'll see then, I'll start making my signature. I'm not gonna do a big signature. For the piece of God study, I only need six sections, six places to do Bible journaling. I will be back finished my sewing on my sewing machine and I wanted to show it to you before I trim it because as I keep saying no one is perfect and as much as I pulled and tried to get it all together look it's it's you know over the edge on there and guess what you do you just take your scissors and you trim it off so I used a zigzag stitch I did not go through the plastic part of the envelope I was sewing just through the edges. I mean, because remember I had left about a quarter of an inch over. So that's all I did. So it's, like I said, it's as good as it's gonna get and I'm perfectly happy with it and it's glued. So I just, I wanted to see, I wanted you to see that yes, mine is not perfect. So if yours comes out like that, don't, don't flip out. But look how beautiful it's going to be. There it is. There is my cover. I'm probably going to have to actually 
because a little bit of that white's showing. And either I'll trim some more, let's trim some more, and then maybe I'll just edge it with black. Yes. Oh yes, this is really nice. Okay, as I said, so here's what I learned, that yes, you can use the uh, bubble wrap envelopes, because as I mentioned, I forgot that the other one I showed you was that flat paper envelope. You can do both. And you glue it, and then you just sew on your sewing machine. So if you don't have a sewing machine, then here's what I would recommend you do. You would cut it much larger. You would take your cover and have it at least like half an inch, probably an inch around extra, and wrap it. Okay, so then on the inside, you're going to have your out your cover wrapped in here. And then you would put, you could just glue a piece of fabric and don't have to do any sewing. <clears throat> Hopefully that makes sense. And if you have a question, obviously just, you know, write me a note. But there's my cover. Now I'm going to work on my signatures. I'm still printing, so I can't show you that yet. Wanted to show you Esther's gorgeous piece of God kit. So mine is the gold kit and Esther's is what we're calling the purple kit because she's got purple and gold. And she added all these beautiful pictures of these porce, I call them the porcelain women. I don't know what else you would call them. She is a, uh, she's done it in both ways. So here's the uh, horizontal pages, which are stunning. I'm gonna quick. Yeah, okay. Quickly flip through the horizontal pages with all the women on them because my little journal, I'm probably going to use the horizontal pages because I think they'll fit. And then she's got vertical pages, also same exact design, they're just done vertically. And you've got that. And her uh, additional background pages are stunning. I uh, used a couple of these in my gold journal if you watched that video. I think it's easier if I do it like this, then I can just flip through them. So these are her gold and then some purple pages that you get, you get like four or five of those also. And then she has tons of uh, uh, ephemera. You've got ATC cards with all the women on them with my hand, I'm sorry, your ATC card's done in a different way. You've got a whole page that you could use in a different way. Circles with blanks and faces, circles with faces, hexagons, more ATC cards. And she's got file folders in there, which I love that. There's some more file folders. Here's a really fun envelope, another envelope. Some pockets for tuck spots. Some mini little envelopes with the girls on them and that would fit right in that envelope. And she's added the piece of God. So there's places where you can use our logo and stamps, is that beautiful? Here's some more logo pieces that you can use. Here's a trifold that I think I might put together and put in my journal. There's another trifold, so I could actually back it to that if you wanted to, or just use them separately. And there's another one. That's her kit. Stay tuned. I am going to be picking things out and making my signature next. I'm back. I've got quite a few things to show you. So I finished the cover and it came out beautiful. I actually made it a little bit too tall. So all I did was cut it down and went back to the sewing machine and sewed it and it works great. I've cut this piece out of Esther's kit and I love it. I think I'm gonna put that in the front, but I feel it needs something. Haven't hasn't come to me yet what's next. I've started to make my signatures. Now, let me show you how I think about uh, signatures. I know that I need six places because there's six weeks in this study that we're doing of Peace of God. So to me, that equates with at least six pages or six spots to journal. And so I've decided to do, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Wait, I think I've got five. I've got five folded over pages, which gives you 10 pages, which is more than enough. So that's all I'm going to do. So this is my cover. And let me open them up and show you. So that's uh, the horizontal piece that I've chosen as the cover. 
and I turned them over and what I decided to do was the pictures of the girls are beautiful but I feel like if I had a picture of a girl on every page your eye would actually not even notice it because it would be too much so what I've gone ahead and done is I took that book that I've talked about in previous videos that I got a Christian book about God and luckily the pages were almost exactly the right for uh, one page each on each side and I just trimmed them down and I've glued them down on the back of that page and then I took one of her purple pages and I've glued two to there so that's the next part um, I'm just trying in pieces and then the next one same thing another purple page but I've done it this way and then this next page hold on there we go is a gold page so you would turn it like that and then that would be that and then this will be here opening that way and then so that's that's all my signature pages then what I decided to do was on the in the center page of the signature I've taken one of the pages uh, with this beautiful girl on it and what I've done is scored it about a half an inch so that it, I'm going to glue it to the back of this, right? And then I folded it, and then I folded it again. And the reason you see that washi tape is because you have to have, you can't make it come right to the edge because then it won't fold in. So I just laid some washi tape down on there so that from your eye perspective, you know, that will work. And that's what I'm going to do. So it'll look like this. It will fold like that. And then this page would turn over and it'll be like this. And then there's two of these pages together. And that gives me places to put all of her beautiful, beautiful ephemera um, and showcase the women uh, along with the Bible verses. So you can tell I've cut these out. This is one of her little uh, envelopes. I've cut it out. I've edged it and I put a notch hole in it. Cut this out, and I've edged that with the green, with the dark brown green, listen to me. Then she has this other little envelope, and because it's going to fold this way, I don't want to see the white. So I left it like this to just show you what I do is I put glue on this part onto the envelope, and then I glue my book page. And again, it's one of my Christian book pages, and we're going to just trim that out. And I'm thinking either these envelopes will end up being, uh, have uh, blank note paper inside that somebody could journal inside, or I may journal. I haven't decided if I'm going, I'm making this to sell or if I'm making it to use. I'm just making it because I love making things. So now when you see, oh, I have to trim this off because we don't need all of that there. You don't have to go all the way in the middle of the envelope. Okay. So now, and then of course I don't need these pieces either. I don't need to make that thicker. Sorry, Lex, it's okay. Here we go again, it's late in the day. Now people are out front. This is the front of my house, looks into my sidewalk in the street. And of course she just sits there and goes nuts thinking, oh yes, I'm gonna go after that dog. I'm gonna go after that. So. Okay, so there's the folds, and this will come up like that. So see how I like the book page inside? I have already scored this, so we'll just go back to the score mark, even though I have that. So see how that nice that looks like that? Okay, that's ready to go in. So what I thought I would do with you now is let's... Let's glue this piece in, and I think you'll see how that is going to work. I'm going to use my Pritt glue. This is just uh, scrap paper to glue on. Let's get that lined up. So you want to butt it right to the fold line, but not over the fold line, because then it won't close right. There we go. So now that's in there correctly, and then this will go over like this. And so this could end up, could be a big pocket if I wanted it to. 
I could close this in there. Let me move this stuff so I can get in the camera. And I could put a thumb hold hunch there. Let's do that. Let's put a punch there. Get my punch out. Hopefully I can do it in the middle. Some days I think I see the middle. And of course, I what do I have a lined, numbered line mat here? If I don't use it, Diane, let me get my pen. Let's see if that will help me do this better. So from seven to 15. Uh, oh, of course, we'll see it's not one. Okay, that doesn't really help me. This looks like it's about right there. That's close enough. Put a thumb hole. Oh, that was hard because it's my heavy paper, my heavy matte paper, and then it was double. Yes, that worked perfectly, Diane. Okay. Now, okay, the next thing I should do is I should glue this part down. This does not need to be apart. So we'll glue that, make that nice and smooth. And then it will fold over. And as I said, I think I'm going to have this as a pocket. And if that's the case, then we are going to use my art glitter glue and I'm gonna put a bead across the top of the top and the bottom. You don't want a real thick part of glue because you wanna have the biggest opening that you can. Close that. There we go. There we go. Of course, did I ink it before I did all that? No. <laughs> okay, well, we're just going to make it work now. There we go. That works. Let me put this back on. And let's edge this. Now I'm happier. And we'll edge that and the fold. And that looks very, very nice. Now let's make sure I didn't pull the glue up. I probably did. So I'm going to just make sure I've got it nice and glued there. And it's not lifting it up. <laughs> Until the glue dries. Yep, I didn't have enough glue on there. Okay. There. Yes, I like that now. So that will be the inside. So here's the signature. Let's look at it again. There's the first page with writing, a purple page, double writing. And it's okay to have so much writing because this is where I'm thinking, see, now I can put these beautiful pieces of ephemera that she has made. So let's go ahead and glue that one down there because I already know that's what I want. Um, okay, I want to glue that, glue that corner and glue these parts. And I did ink this, yes. So that looks very nice. So that breaks up the writing. Then we've got the purple. And as I mentioned, I really like this little envelope. But see, here's the trick. Her face is on this side. So, How do I make that work either as a tuck-in that you pull this envelope out, then you would see it. Because if I turn it over, which is the way an envelope is, or you turn it this way even, can I put it as a flip out? Let's see if we do a flip. 
It's really not going to work that well. I think it should be a tuck-in. We've got this bigger one. Maybe this bigger one goes here. Now this one, this, that would be like that. Actually, that works because the girl is on this side. So we could have it as a flip out. How about if we do that? Okay, what I didn't do on this one is I didn't line it with book page. So, okay, I've got a piece left. Yes, and it's just enough. Let's set that aside. Let's open this back up. As I said, the easiest way to do this is just glue onto your envelope and lay your book paper down to the, to the flap and down maybe about an inch and a half. That's all you need and then you trim it to make it fit. And then I turn it this way so that the writing is fairly straight. What I suggest to people is when you buy a digital kit and because I make them, people give you so much eph uh, ephemera in there, go ahead and print and trim out all your ephemera. And if it's an envelope, go ahead and make the envelope, okay? Then you have it all ready. And then when you put your signatures together, it, it just kind of comes together. You already know the pieces that you have. I say that for the bigger pieces. Now, like uh, Esther has stamps and lots of smaller ephemera in this kit. I have not cut those out yet because to me, those are the last things I usually put down to add some interest to a page. But the big pieces, you have to decide fairly early on in constructing a journal, are you going to use them, number one? Where will you use them, number two? And three, how will you use them? Like I'm just saying, do I wanna have it as um, you know, a flip out? Do I, am I gonna just glue the back? the page how am I going to do that so okay we've got that done and let's put the pin back in here earlier in this bit video you saw how many times I didn't and then it dried up my ink my glue which I was not happy about and let's get that <coughs> now see now that looks so much better doesn't it Stop, stop. And so I think I like that. I think we were auditioning it for here. So see, now I'm auditioning. This is what I call this. We're auditioning what goes on the pages. And do you see what I'm trying to teach you about placement? And um, your eye has to have some rest. So if this page was here, let's say, and I laid this on here, see how this basically blends away and then you don't even notice it. So I'm using Esther's kit as a few well strategically placed pieces and I'm gonna be trimming out and using some of her other ephemera. So yes, you get a lot of these pictures, but don't forget, as I always say, I love to make lots of pieces in a digital kit. And if you use them in the in the in this one, fine. But if you don't, guess what? That's ready for your next kit. Then you get a big basket like I have sitting here of all my papers, and as I go to build things, I go, oh yeah, that paper, oh look how nice that paper, will look here. So that's a little story about how to do that. And if we do it as a flap, we will do it with uh, tape, washi tape. Do I like that? And, no, I don't think so. I think it's too, too much design going on. Let me pick one of these. This works better. Here. So I'm going to come over here and lay it on my mat. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. You put half on the piece that you're trying to make a hinge. Mm. Sorry, that was out of, out of the camera. Apologize. Okay, so now it's ready. 
and let's line this back up and this will be right on there like that. And what I always do is I flip it over and I take the same washi tape and I do the exact same thing on this side so that I have a nice strong hinge. open to these two pages. Now for me, this is excellent because this gives me the opportunity to bring in some of her wonderful pieces uh, of ephemera. So do I want one that says Peace of God? Oh, see, I just like those. Oh, wow. That one might look really good because it picks up that. Let me see if I can use my little guillotine. It'd be a lot nicer. No, it's too short. I just bought this because I needed a smaller one. And I hate to tell you, I'm glad I got it, but so many times I need the big guillotine because I need to do the length of the paper, which this does not do. But I can do the sides and get those ready and then bring the other guillotine over. So if you've just joined our Facebook group and you just found us and you just heard about the Peace of God study, welcome. We are very happy you are here. If you're just watching some of these videos, our starter videos, and it's a couple weeks in, don't worry. We're just, we set up this study to be done in six weeks, but all of the discussion and the links and everything will be in the group. They'll be in Esther's group. So you might come across this study four months from now and decide, oh, I want to do that. That'll make my life easier now. Let me trim that off. And you can start this, stop it at any time. You could also do it and uh, buy the, this purple kit that's Esther's or my gold kit and make one give it to somebody else and invite them to do a study of peace with you. So you have lots of options. I'm all for always uh, making and sharing with other people. That's part of what I feel like God's given me my ministry to do is to do that, to uh, make things share with people because so many people don't know, they have no idea or they never thought about, let's put it this way, they never thought about, well, yes, I worship God on Sundays, and that's wonderful. What do you mean? And I love the junk journal, but I never thought of adding my faith to a junk journal. And what I'm going to say to you is the first step is add your faith to a junk journal. The step that I'm at is I only make junk journals that are, uh, about my faith. I don't just make one. Like some people make one about fairies or something like that. That's just not me. And I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying that's not me. So at first I thought that would go, but I think it needs this contrast. And then this one, oh, this one's so pretty too. Well, I'll end up using all of them. So hopefully you will get to the place where you'll start and make a, journal, a junk journal about faith. Maybe this particular one will be your first one. And then you realize, oh, I have so many other topics. Like in my, my Etsy store, I have two kits on joy. I have a living faith kit. We have this peace of God kit. And I'm working on three others. One is going to be about the factual numbers of the Bible, not numerology, but the numbers. Numbers like 40. What is, what does, why do we hear 40 so many times? Uh, 40 days before um, Noah landed, correct? 40 days Jesus went in the desert. How about the number 12? 12 disciples, 12 tribes. So I've made this gorgeous kit. I'm going to launch it soon that we're going to be studying all about that. So, okay, I don't know if I just want to add, I think the high contrast works the best on there. Do I want to just add a, 
like that and leave it and then journal around it. Mm, and maybe I'm not at that place yet. And then we have this fold out. And so, oh, that's the same girl, so I wouldn't use that one. <laughs> I could put this in there. I could put some journaling pages in there. Okay, I feel like I have enough pages. I've done enough big pieces added to this journal at this point. We've got this beautiful tuck. Oh, yep, that needs some more glue, doesn't it, Diane? I think that I'm really at the stage now to sew my signature in. And hopefully it will work on the first try. I'm not the best with this. When I did my video for my gold one, it was interesting. It ended up working, but I got somewhat frustrated. Hopefully this will be as simple and go there, go easily. Let's put it that way. So I'm feeling good about my five signatures, which gives me 10 pages. Let me get ready. I may have to stop the filming to get everything together, but I'll try. I do want to show you that in this, this video. I'm going to pull that one out, I think, and then maybe pull it back in because this is where we're going to be. First thing before I do a signature, though, I just realized is I did not ink all the et in inside. And you can see these are not cut straight. Mm, doesn't really care. I don't really care. The fact that I just wanted those pages to be backed by book pages was my goal. And the minute I put some dark ink on it, you will not notice that they don't match correctly. Let's go ahead and ink up the whole thing. And as you watch any of my videos on my YouTube channel and you have any questions, please feel free to ask if I'm not clear on something or if I go buy something fast. Number two, please like and subscribe to my channel. That would, that would give me a lot of encouragement. I just launched my business in January, so I'm still relatively new, although I've been in the visual faith business for over 10 years. I just never had my own Etsy store and I never bothered making technique videos to show people. I've had people over the years ask me to make them. I just didn't go there, but now I am. And I'm feeling, I love what I'm doing. Oh, that's upside down. There we go. It has to go like this. Yes. Okay. Let's get this all edged. I think I'm going to stop the video because you don't need to watch me edging things. That's kind of boring. And I'll come back and I'll be ready to sew in the signature. And if you don't know how to do a pamphlet stitch, then you will get a good example of how to do that. I've gotten everything prepared. So a couple things I'm going to tell you that I did off camera to remind you. First of all, I take every, I'm gonna take this back apart for a second. Every piece of signature, I open up one more time and I use my bone folder and really, really crease it. So I've done that with all five pages. And that way when you, Sam, when you put them together, they are really as flat as it's ever going to be. And then you want to do exactly what I just did. You need to clamp everything. The other thing that I did was I measured the middle of my book and I've got some red pen on there. And then how do you do, how do you know where the three holes to go? A lot of women do not measure and that's okay. Um, sometimes I measure, sometimes I don't. But if you wanna know how to measure, take a piece of paper that's the exact same height as your insert, your signature, right? Fold it in half. Fold it in half this way and fold it in half one more time. Use your uh, ink and ink up the edges so you will then see exactly where. And so I've done that and I put little arrows so you see exactly where the holes are, okay? So I want to lay this, my crease, right in the crease of, and that's why some people don't measure this because you have to make sure that your holes are lined up into the middle of where your signature is. And that is, I have that right in there. 
and then you take your pokey tool, whatever you're using, and you're going to go right in the middle of that and you're going to go all the way through. So see, it came through, okay? And what I typically do is I go like this to make it so hopefully I can see it <laughs> when I flip it over to put the needle in. So there's the one. And I'm gonna put it through the paper, but I'm also gonna make sure I'm right on the crease. And we're gonna go all the way through there. And then be careful, I have a, one of these mats on here, so I'm okay with that. It's not, and this is a glass tabletop, so I'm not ever hurting my desk. But you may be hurting your desk when you go to do this. And the last one, we're gonna line it back up to where those were. And there it is, right there. And if it's off slightly, it's not a big deal. Okay, let's make sure that hole is nice and opened up. Okay, and now I see my holes very clearly. And they went through very nicely into here. And are they lined? Yes, because that's the other thing you want. You can't see, but I can see. One, two, three. They're actually in a line. That's the other problem that I've had doing this is that they, I thought they were in line and then they turned out they weren't. And I'm going to use my gold. I just have my needle. Of course, where did it go, Diane? It was right there. Oh, there it is. It went off the, went off the, okay. <clears throat> Here's my needle. How much thread do you use? You never want to be short, so at least do one, two, three is safe, and I'm gonna go farther because I'm going to have the middle of this on the outside have some dangles off of it, so we're gonna do another like that much, okay? Got that trim, and I use wax thread. I got a whole bag of it on Amazon with multiple colors. This will probably last me for 20 years. <laughs> I've got all the main basic colors. I mean, if you're looking for purple or something like that, then you're gonna have to go and get that on your own. Okay, I keep talking and dropping things, and then you're going to, for me, an old lady, I have to use a big eye needle. <laughs> and as I said, uh, normally I would go in from here but because I want to end it out here, we're going to go out here. This is where it's going to be dangling. So I'm going to push it through it. Yay, look, it came through perfect. Oh my gosh. Maybe the third time's the charm this time. Okay, I'm going to leave about that much. See how much I have there? That's plenty. So we come through here. Oh, I just pulled a little bit too much. Okay, come through here. I'm going to go back up to the top and hopefully it will go straight. Oh, and it feels like it went right in the hole again. Wow, I am on a roll today. So we're going to go there. I'm going to pull that through. And you want this to be somewhat taut. Okay, so I'm back over here. And now I'm going to go. Wait a minute, Diane. I'm getting confused. Do I do this? And then go there and come back. No, that won't work. No, you go all the way to the bottom. I'm going through my bottom hole. And oh my gosh, I am just so in a roll. It's all lined up perfectly. This does not happen. As I said, it doesn't happen because I don't do this enough and I've been doing it so much recently. And then I'm going to put this back into that hole and you don't want to go through your thread. You kind of want to go on the side of it. And I did. Excellent. Okay. And now we are going to pull this as tight as we can. So you want to pull both of them, one in either way, right? And let me pull that all the way through. There we go. Okay. That's pretty tight, Diane. And I'm going to loop one of these under that. And then I'm going to Pull that off and I'm going to tie this. There we go. Double. I'm going to go under one more time to 
just for good measure. Excellent. And I think I will just trim a little bit of that off. So I've left some nice tails there. You have no idea how happy I am, especially because it was on camera that I got it right. <laughs> it's even more important. Let me put my needle back so I do not lose it. I've got that in my little bag here. And take my clamps off. I got these clamps at, uh, oh, here, Diane, put them in the camera, Dollar Tree. They have... I think you get three in a pack for $1.25. I've been looking, though, for longer clamps. This works on this size book. But the minute I get something, I don't know, I can't get down far enough that I have not had any success finding anything. And there we go. Oh, my goodness. Yes, it's so beautiful. Isn't that going to be pretty? And then the other thing I did off camera is I took a piece of... Okay, she, I'm sorry. Here, this was a file folder, a little tiny file folder, and I decided I wanted a tuck with this purpley color. So I just cut it on a diagonal, and of course I can use her again, and I glued that on there, so I've got a nice tuck there. And then in the back, I wanted to break up the beige. This is a piece of fabric that I had in my stash and a beautiful piece of lace that I got from Timu. So here will be another pocket. And I hot glued that on the edges. I did not sew it. I didn't feel like my sewing machine would go through how thick it is. I think I'm gonna be able to end this video <laughs> of making this whole thing. It's lots of little parts, but we'll get it all together. Well, thank you and blessings to you for joining me today in this video. I, would, I want to say a prayer as we close this video time together. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. And the Lord be with you all. 2 Thessalonians 3.16